Okay, so last time we were talking about this formula here, the present value of a compound interest problem, and I think I'll start off with this as a little review. Um, but this is the idea, think of it as the college, well, the kids that parents raise to go to college someday. And the parents want to know, well, how much do I need to put away in the bank right now so that I can have like $80,000 in the future for my kids? Okay, so this is, uh, it's like you put a lump sum in today, that's what it's saying here, to have a certain amount in the future. So, there we go, we'll pause it right here then. So again, I'd like to start off by giving you an example again, because it's been a weekend now. And last time when we were doing this, we did, I think we did this, I think we did this example, this one. And so we did that one. And now let's look at a doubling problem. Did we look at this one? I don't know if we did this one. Okay, doubling time. So this sort of problem wants to figure out how long will it take for your money to double? Like if you put in 10000 how long will it take to become 20000 Okay. So what we do is we write down our formula like this. And then the thing you need to realize is that no matter what the money is, if it doubles, it's going to look like this. Let me, uh, let's just say uh, the, the amount that we put in the bank, let's say it's uh, X, okay? Who cares what it is? It could be a million dollars, it could be $10, it could be $1,000. Well, if it doubles, um, if it doubles, then the future value is going to be twice that, okay? You see, so what happens if you were playing around with this equation, if we can just do some simple algebra, we could put 2x here, and we could put x here, and then we will assume that you have some interest rate and you have some compounding quarterly or something like that. So for the sake of our argument, let's just say the interest rate is equal to 6%. Okay. And let's say the compounding is like a normal compounding in a bank would be quarterly. So if it's compounding quarterly, we'll make M equal to 4, which is 4 quarters in one year. Okay, well, that being said, we put a 1 here, and we would put a 0 0.06 here. We would put a 4 here, and then we would put 4 times T here. Well, if you do some basic algebra, and you divide by X here, and you divide by X here, what happens? The X's cancel, and you have 2 is equal to... Now, if you do this little calculation in your calculator, what does it end up being? Can you just do that real quick? Yeah. 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4. Um, this part that's inside our calculator is 1.015. Okay, so what you do to solve this problem is typically we use what's called a logarithm. And logarithms are things that we're going to learn about in Chapter 4. We haven't learned that yet. So in place of a logarithm, we'll do what's called a guess and check method. And so what we'll do is we'll just plug in some numbers here for T right here and see how close we get to 2. And usually within four or five guesses, you can guess the time. Okay, so maybe maybe we'd start out with, here would be our first guess. We'd say t equal to, say, 5. Okay. And so you put the 5 in there, and so you'd have, well, this is equal to, now you might try your calculators with this, 1, 5. If you put a 5 in here, you're going to have a 20 here, right? So... Try that in your calculator and see how close we are to 2. See, we're trying to get 2 here. 
huh? Yeah, I used to have a calculator. Every day you should be picking up a calculator. Uh, for this chapter, we're using lots of calculator stuff. Not even close, huh? So if I do 1.015, <coughs> I get, uh, this is equal to 1.346. Anna, can you do this calculation? Sorry, this is for everybody to try. You should be working with the calculators right now. We're di we did our first guess. We tried T equal to 5. Uh, we're trying to get two over here. Since we didn't get two and this number is too small, just make it up here. How about we go up to equal to ten? So my second guess I would do, I would say, okay, well let's try t equal to ten. Yeah, I'm gonna do if if I do that I would have one point zero one five. <laughs> And if you put a 10 up here, then what's your exponent going to be? 40. Okay, so I recommend doing that calculation in your head. Well, let's try that one and see what we get. We're still not close. Okay, 1.01. 1, 1 .01. And hang on. Hang on. 25 carat. And we do 40. Oh man, we're getting closer though. 1.814. So just in two guesses, we're getting closer. What do you think? 12, 13, 14, 15? What's the next key we should try? 12 maybe? We're a lot closer. We're almost there. I mean, we went from 1. Point, maybe 12. Okay, so now our third guess, we're going to do t equal to 12. Again, we want it to be exactly two or pretty close to two. And this would be the amount of time it takes for your money to double at 6% interest. Okay, so if we try this at 12, we get 1.015. And then if you put the 12 in here, it would be 12 times 4, which is 48, right? Okay, so what do we get this time? Oh, we go slightly over. 1.015 carat 12, excuse me, 48. Uh, this time we're slightly over. So 2.04. Okay, so now that we're closer, um, I would say within a few more guesses, we would have approximately how much time it's going to take. It's going to take at most 12 years, uh, slightly less than 12 years. So we might do one more guess. How about t equal to 11? See how that does. Okay. Okay, so if we try 1.015 and we go with 11, then we're going to put a 44 up here. Because remember, we multiply that by 4. And when you try that one, what do we get? 1.9. So it looks like it's slightly more than 11 years, but less than 12. Okay? So um, that's how you're going to be doing any doubling problems. Since we don't know, since we don't know logarithms, we can't solve this exactly yet. But in the future, <laughs> when we learn logarithms, we'll come back to this problem and we'll be able to solve it exactly. Okay, make sense? So I think you will have one or two problems on your homework. But just realize on that problem you have to use this equation and you have to guess. Um, but usually you get it within five guesses, okay? Yeah. All right, let's talk about one last problem that comes up. And um, uh, we'll do uh, we did a, one of those. The effective rate. So Often banks will say what their annual percent rate is. That's called APR, annual percent rate. Um, the thing is, if you look at the formula, there's this formula right down here. 
Um, if you were to compound a dollar, if it was a cent, and you were to compound a quarter, well, how many people have to do compound this year in a year? And you mean if it were half percent, it was based on simple interest, you'd have a dollar and you'd have a cent. So the attrition rate is more accurate, we think, than the when we say ADR is all the same, it's because it's kind of important getting this thing on point this year. And so sometimes we do this calculation called RRB, which is a Latin figure, but it's called the effective rate. And that just means it's really effective on you. Um, we would say, uh, oh, by the way, this is this is written wrong here. Um, oh, yeah, no, no, that's right. Okay, so so anyhow, um, you might be asked on a couple problems to do any effective rate problem. I think the formula is up on the board, so it, it shouldn't present you any problems. All you do is uh, plug in some numbers. Um, so. Uh, for this problem right here, if you were doing 5% and you're um, compounding quarterly, you would put a 4 right here, you put a 4 right here, you put 0 0.05 right here, and then you put this in your calculator. And it would be equal to 1.05098. is taken off because that's your principal and if you want to change this back to a percent you'd move the decimal over two so this is 5.09 percent okay so when a bank says that their annual percent rate is five percent the real feeling of that would that be actually 5.09 percent which is slightly more than that make sense and that's because they're compounding quarterly. If they compounded annually, it would be exactly 5%. Does that make sense? Uh, all right. Well, um, that kind of concludes this lesson, I think. I think we're done. Oh, well, we could do this problem, but um, I have it worked out here so you can see it. So, for example, uh, if, it's comp if you compound semi-annually, uh, the APR, the annual percent rate, is only be 8.25%. But if you find the effective rate, it's slightly more than that. You see, turns out it's 8.42%. You see? Now, this can be very misleading in a sense. I mean, if I were a bank, and I was telling you how much money you get in, your, in our account, I'd say, hey, you get this much percent rate. But this is actually the effective rate. The actual rate, this is what they call the APR right here, the annual percent rate. That's the APR that most banks have to state. Okay? Uh, so, anyhow, just be aware um, when you're shopping around for loans and things like that, you have to be aware of the fact that they might <laughs> be presenting to you the effective rate instead of uh, the annual percent because this looks better than that one. I mean, it's almost a almost, uh, quarter percent higher. And if you have lots of money, that makes a big difference. So, anyhow, that being said, uh, I think we'll conclude this lesson. And now you can have the remainder of the period to work on the assignment. Okay? Um, we've already done about half of the assignment in class. And so you've got the remaining eight or nine problems to do. We've got about 40 minutes right now to work on it. Okay, so that's the end. Stop.